Well, what do we have? We have Bitcoin making more and more attempts to go even above $8,300 now, forming kind of a sending channel. People who have opened their shorts continue to average their position expecting and hoping the price going lower. While we have, for example, news from BACT, which will start their tests for the futures on July 22nd, so they announced this date. Also, Coinbase launches its cryptocurrency debit card in six more countries in Europe, Germany, Spain, France, Italy, Ireland and Netherlands. Moreover, soon we'll have Binance dot us so we'll have the service from binance provided for the citizens of united states of america as they say in full compliance i wonder how it will work with all the ios and other gray area things which binance deals with but in any case they are expanding and crypto doesn't seem to be going to die not saying about the fact that Bitcoin will go to $2,000 or $1,000, whatever. Let's look at the interesting metrics which I was going to share with you today. It is made by Ikigai Fund and it's pretty interesting in terms of the application of the on-chain data to evaluate market conditions for Bitcoin and what they basically do. First, they use the concept of Bitcoin's days destroyed as also was used in the HODL waves. And if you don't know about HODL waves, it is made by Unchain Capital. We made the video about that maybe a couple of months ago. The idea here is that by analyzing the lifetime of the UTXOs in the blockchain of Bitcoin, you may see that they have different lifespans and you can categorize them by these characteristics. For example, here you see the blue area is the Bitcoins on the addresses held for more than five years. And the warmer the color, the shorter this period is. And for example, very low here is Bitcoins, which often change the addresses, trading and everything. So the main takeaway here is that the number of long-term holders is increasing every year. Now it is something like 20%, more than 20% actually. So the same concept is in Bitcoin Days Destroyed. It is basically the quantity of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of days since those coins were moved. Of course, people want to accumulate Bitcoin because it grows in value and as soon as it brings some decent profits, they may close it and then maybe buy in once again when it becomes cheaper because you see this cyclic structure of the price and for example on this chart what the analysts from Ikigai made they actually showed when this metrics Bitcoin days destroyed and actually they divided it by circulating supply so they showed when this metrics is above the average so when the Bitcoin days destroyed adjusted is more than average you see here at the top and here as well and here when the price spikes too much we see more and more days destroyed. It means that long-term holders tend to close their positions around the peaks of the price. And the other way around, they don't seem to be selling their long-term holdings when the price is low, which is pretty wise. So what those guys made then is that they noticed that the number of Bitcoin days destroyed on a given day rarely exceeds the circulating supply. So then they made something which they called the value of coins days destroyed by multiplying this adjusted Bitcoin days destroyed on the price for each day, they would have the areas when the selling activity of those long-term traders is high. It could be found out by the place when this gray area, which is this VOCD, is above the level of the price, which is represented here by the black line. It's a bit noisy, so they smoothed it and have some medium value. So you see, it's very accurately touched the price at every peaks. But when we see Bitcoin price around the bottom, we see that this delta between this matrix and the price is very high, well, relatively high. And it's basically very similar for all the bottoms in 2012, 15th, and even 2018th and 19th. So you see around here, when we had the lowest of the price, people didn't sell their Bitcoins. And here is the interesting thing. So right now, when we see the price going that fast and that high, Many people are saying even something that it is a huge bull trap, we will go even lower, at least $3,000, $2,000, maybe $1,000, a huge correction is required and so on and so forth. So what you can see, despite this sort of a parabolic move, 
we don't really have this matrix approaching the price level. I mean, yes, it is becoming closer, but it's not as close as it was be before here in 2017, when we saw very similar dynamics in terms of the speed of the price increase and everything. So it means that the current condition of the price based on the on-chain metrics is really far from being inorganic and it's not really necessary to have a significant dump at certain point instead of that we may continue to go higher maybe with some sideways price action minor corrections but still the market is not really overbought as it may seem well they are continuing actually to elaborate the metrics and they did something as they called hodl bank which is basically a cumulative sum for this matrix and then if you would divide the price on the value of the hodl bank then you may have another matrix which they called reserve risk and you can see it's again a pretty nice match for the price action for the highs for the lows and again right now we are entering the bull territory this is a good sign but it's nothing crazy here so we are somewhere around this area beginning of 2017 but it doesn't mean that we would have to have something like a dramatic drop because of the rise being too fast so guys i think it's interesting data and again unique for bitcoin as an asset class because you have all the transactions on the blockchain you can track many things and it is useful for evaluating the market conditions. And the main takeaway what I would like to point out here is that trend is your friend. Don't fight with it. And now we're having the rising trend. So if you're trying to short Bitcoin, well, at least try to minimize your risk and set appropriate stop orders. And that is it for today, guys. I hope it was useful. Thank you for watching.